he puts it in the pocket. She's missing $22,000. You're breaking my fucking heart. I'm gonna stop him. Keep going, keep going. What up? Hey, Patrick, put your hands behind your back. I didn't break it. You blew two times the legal limit. Oh, I did. Put your hands behind your back. I swear to God! While being arrested is never fun, when it happens in front of your coworkers, it's downright humiliating. Hey, it's over. You had your chance. Here are cases of criminals caught committing crimes at work and suffering the consequences. Starting with the case of a teacher who showed up drunk to work. On August 17, 2023, Perkins, Oklahoma police are called to the scene of a local elementary school, where third grade teacher Kimberly Coates is suspected of being intoxicated. She's called into the back office where police await, and while she doesn't know it yet, her life is about to change forever. Kimberly, come on in here and have a seat a second. Okay. I want to visit. All right. So, um, just observing you in the classroom, it looks like something's off a little bit. And so I've asked uh, Officer Dean to come in here and visit with it. Has you, you know, um, have you taken anything that's... You know, do you have a prescription for anything that maybe you have taken today that just seems like you're not the same person that I talked to this morning? Um, I did take a, I, I did take some medication yeah, last night to to help me with sleep because I have some anxiety stuff. But that's that's I can't think of the name of it right now. But I could look it up when I get home. Yeah. So you haven't taken anything while you were at school? No. Um, now, one thing I would tell you is, um, you know, um, for your appointment, I want you to, you to be truthful. Uh, okay. And so, um, would you um, be willing to take a breathalyzer test? If I needed to, yeah. Okay. You don't have to, but if you're willing to do it, that helps us. Have you taken any sort of medication today? I'm sorry, what? Have you taken any medication today? I did take some medication this morning for my anxiety. What did you take this morning? Um, I think it's called, um, um, Quasipin. I'm not, I'm not very good with it. Did you take it here at school? I took it, the, yeah, I took it this morning. While you were here? Yeah, right before I came in, yes. Okay. Is it a prescription? Because you changed your story a little bit. Now yeah, you said it was last night. Yeah. Well, I took one last night, and then I took one this morning because my anxiety was really like that. Uh, well, well, that's understandable. But I just so, what, what time did you take it? This morning. Whenever you took it last, when, when, what time was that? Um, I'm not really for sure. Where's it at? In your car? In your classroom? No, I had one. In, I took it in my. I put it in my pocket, and then I took it. You put it in your pocket? Yeah, yeah. Because I didn't want to bring the whole bottle in. You do know that if it's a narcotic, you have to have it in the bottle, right? Or you can be charged with it? I did Even not know that. <laughs> yeah, it's got to be in the prescription bottle. Yeah. So, just, I want you to understand that I care very much about you, okay? And I just, I need to make sure you're okay. I need to make sure that you're safe and I've got to make sure that the kids are safe. So we're just trying to help you and make sure everything's okay. Coates claims she's taken medication for her anxiety, but changes her story as to when she took it. Approaching the situation carefully, the staff gives her every chance to come clean before administering the breathalyzer. It's just a lot different. So if there is anything that you need to cover, please post comments so that we can, we can help you. I mean, I am having I, I am having a hard time with some depression stuff, and I I um did you drink something while you were here at school? Not while I was at school. When did you drink something? Last night. Okay. Not here at school because. It seemed that it changed. I mean, your demeanor kind of changed. Anything here at school? Oh, I, I wouldn't bring it into the school. Okay. Are you gonna blow double zeros? 
I don't know. You should know. If you hadn't drank anything, you should blow zeros. If you drank something recently, you're, it's going to show it. Well, let's find it. You should know. Makes me think that you are not going to. Okay, so what's going to happen? If, if I'm not going to do anything with you. Well, I'm, okay. I'm asking Mrs. Bowles. Well, I'm just going to be honest. Kimberly, I'm concerned about you. I have a responsibility to take care of the kids. Right. And it's not going to be my decision. It's my decision. So let's see what happens. All right. All right. So you're... You're going to blow into it like you're blowing up a balloon, okay? And you're going to keep blowing until I tell you to stop, until I tell you to stay, until I tell you to stop, okay? All right. All right, give it just a second. I, I, I don't know how to do this. You're just going to blow into it like you're blowing up a balloon as soon as I tell you to. All right, you ready? Take a big deep breath. Blow, 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 blow. All right, stop. Good job. You want to tell me the truth? How much you had to drink? I drank last night. There's no way you drank last night. Well, I did drink last night. Did you drink at school? Is what he's asking. Tell us the truth. I, I didn't drink at school. That wouldn't blow that right there. You blew two times the legal limit. I did? Yeah. Here's our drink that you have. What's in this drink? That's a Diet Coke. Is there anything like liquor in it? Nope. So, if I go into the classroom, am I going to find anything else? Did you go to your room and drink if we go out and search your car? No. So, where did the liquor come from? Did you leave campus? Not today. This thing is pretty accurate. No, I know it is. So I, know, I know it is. You blew like a point two four. I don't know what that means. What's Legal it? limit's point zero eight. Okay. Do you drink often? Unfortunately, yes. Yes, okay. Yeah. I'm not trying to insult you. I'm just trying to understand no, no, why. No, I, I, I'm seeing a counselor. I'm seeing a counselor about it, so. You haven't had anything to drink today? Not since, well, so 3 a.m. Your expert opinion, she's under the influence? I think she's probably a functioning alcoholic. Would she blow that? She could and be normal and like be And fun. not drink today? Well, no. No, because she's had to have drank sometime today. While Coates Basti is nearly three times the legal limit, she still appears relatively coherent. As the officer explains, this may be explained by a case of functioning alcoholism. Nevertheless, she won't be eager to try again. Do you want to blow one more time on no, a different straw? I don't want to. to see if it changes? No. I, I want y'all to tell me what I have to do. I just want you to be honest. Yeah. I, I'm seeing the counselor for my stuff. So. I, do you live here in town? I live in I, I live in Stillwater. Do you have anybody that's there that could come pick you up? Um. um my husband's still he's still at school working. Uh, can I check your eyes? Do what? Can I check your eyes? Yeah. Can I stand up? Mm -hmm. I'm not going to go through the entire test, but... Um, do you know your husband's number? Am I calling? I, I don't want you to call him. Well, I can't let you leave. If you leave, you're going to get arrested. Yeah, I'm going to rush you for DUI. So I need somebody to come pick you up. I just, I, I, I know I've been having a hard time. I just, uh, am, am I going to get fired? Just I, honestly, yes. Or you can resign. You're under the influence at school with kids. That cannot happen. I, 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 can it not just be that it's in my blood system and that's why Unless it's... Unless you were... drank a shit ton 
Well, at I, like I, eight o'clock this morning, I don't think I don't know how you could still be that high. I did drink a lot last night. How much did you drink? But I don't too much. What What do you drink? Wine. So wine. how many how many bottles of wine did you drink? Uh, we had the box. Did you drink a whole box of wine? Mm, half a box. And you stopped drinking at like three this Presley morning? Presley Johnson, please come to the uh, office. Presley the problem Johnson. is, is they said you were please fine this morning. The and then now, after, recently, they've noticed a difference. See, and that's weird to me. That's, that's, uh, that, that it was okay this morning. I would think that it would be. Which makes me think that you, you've drank recently. I would, I would think, I, I could see like this morning, but I couldn't see. Like. So, your options are: we call somebody to pick you up. You come visit me tomorrow. Two, you get. I, I won't even let you get your vehicle. I'll just arrest you right now for public talks. Please don't do that. Then you should probably find a ride. Can I can I make that happen myself? Right now. Do I have to do it in right here? Yes, we I, need to know somebody's gonna yeah. We're not leaving he's not gonna leave here until somebody picks you up. So either you leave in a vehicle or you leave in my vehicle, one of the two. So who are we calling? I, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm just, I'm, a, I'm having a hard time. So who do you go home to? Your husband? Mm -hmm. So why can't we call your husband? I don't want you to, I don't want you to have to call him. Well, he's either going to come here and pick you up, or he's going to take you to the police station. Well, I don't want that to happen either. Well, then you got to figure this out. We're not going to do this run around. Either you make the decision or I'll make it for you and you'll be walked out of here in handcuffs. Okay, I don't want... I don't okay. Want then we need to call someone. I'm not trying to be a jerk, but we can't no, run this. No, I know. We don't have all day for you to make a decision. No, I, I'm not. I'm not trying to be like that. I'm just. I'm just. I'm. I'm. I'm just. I'm. Okay, you got one minute. Tell me a number. We're gonna call, or we're trying to let you at least have some dignity and not walk out of here in front of everybody. No, I. Us. So if you let us call somebody, we'll wait. They can come wait outside. Everybody's gone. We'll tell them to be here at 4.30, and we'll, you'll be able to leave the building without anybody seeing. But if we're, we don't have time to sit and keep doing this. No, I, I, I understand. I'm, I'm sorry. I, I don't mean to be, I don't mean to be like, be like that. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I'm trying to, I'm trying. So if, if we call somebody to come and get me, so then what happens after that? Then you're going to meet me tomorrow at my office, and we'll discuss your employment. What, what, what time tomorrow? 9 a.m. So, so what happens? So, what happens then, Mr. Ogle? Well, my recommendation to the board is going to be to terminate you because you're under the influence, or you can resign. You you won't give me like a second chance no. or anything. No, not in this situation. Your story's changed two or three times. I don't think you're personally being honest with this. Uh, well, uh, what? I'm, I'm we we think that you drank today. Not 3 a.m. We think that you've drank since you've been at school. And I don't believe you're being honest with us. Do you want to change that story? Uh, no, I, I mean, even if I did, does that make it, does that make a difference to, to work here? I, I, I well, it helped to. me to be able to understand that maybe, you know, maybe do I need to be sympathetic with you a little bit? I just don't believe you right now. I think you're lying to us. Okay, I drank on the way to work. Yeah, I, 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 I'm glad that you told us that. Okay, um, we'll still discuss tomorrow. I, I went to work here. I, 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 I went to work here. Yeah. Um, so tomorrow at nine o'clock. Now let's call somebody and have them pick you up. No, I, I can't call my husband. Do you have anyone else you can call? You have a friend that can come pick you up? <laughs> I don't know. Would you rather call your husband to come pick you up, or would you rather call your husband to come get you from jail? Uh, well, actually, neither. Well, I mean, you've got it. You're running out of time. 
Um. While Coates may be suffering from a disease, it doesn't change the fact that officers and staff need her to leave one way or another. I'll call, I'll call somebody. Um, um, uh. I'm, I'm sorry. I don't, I, I don't mean to, 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 to waste your, your time or anything like that. I'm, I'm sorry. I just want someone to come pick you up so I don't have to humiliate you by walking out. No, I don't. Home. No, please don't do that. Then please. let's call someone. We need a number right now to call, or I'm done. Okay? Okay. So give me a number. Who am I calling? I, I don't I don't have it by heart. Where's your phone at? It's in the classroom. Can I go, can I go get you it? You can't, no. Huh? You can't, no. I will let, let me see if I can get it. What did you drink this morning? I don't drink anything but wine. Okay. Hey, can I call you back? Right. So you drank wine here on the way to the school this morning? Yeah, before I left home. I didn't drink it in the car or anything. Okay, I'm going to go to your room. Where is your phone? Can I go down there with no. you? I don't even... You don't know where it's at? I think it's in my purse. But your I'm, purse is where? Can I please? Can I please? No, there's kids in the hall. And there's teachers all standing here. I, they don't even know you're in here. It might be on the desk. It's on the desk, I think. Is there any alcohol or anything in your room? I don't think so. I don't know. I don't know. The principal goes to retrieve her phone from her desk. She claims that there is no alcohol in the room. But when he returns with a cup that smells like wine, it becomes pretty apparent why she wanted to go retrieve the phone with him. Okay, no more games, right? Yeah. What is in that? Uh, uh, my juice. I'm gonna try again. That layer is wine. I thought that was from yesterday. Did you get my phone? This in here. I, I'm whatever you want. To do. Well, I mean, is, is my phone in here? I didn't go through your bag. That's your. You can. Your purse. I know, but my thing is. I, I, yeah, that's I mean, all that's I need. A, yeah. Did Did you get my phone? I, you said your phone was in the purse. Well, I thought it was on the desk, but it's okay. Are you gonna call someone? Well, I don't. I I don't. I used to have everybody's numbers, but. You gonna get your phone and call someone? Well, Is it not in there? I thought it was on the desk. I have half mind to arrest you just because you lied to me. Okay, what do I need to do to, to make everything right? I just wanted honesty. That's all I wanted. I, I drank out of that yesterday. I didn't drink out of it today. You, I don't believe you. I, I drank out of that coming to work yesterday. Well, where where's the cup that you drank out of today? Is it in your classroom too? I don't. I don't think so. Honestly, I I thought I was doing a good job today. I don't know. I, I don't know. By this point, she's been caught lying on several occasions and appears to be stalling. The officer is done waiting and gets up to make an arrest. I'll call somebody. I have somebody right here in town that will nope. come get me. Too late. Please. What's your date of birth, Kimberly? Please, please, please just let me. Can we Hey, I'm this? not doing it. I'm not doing it. You had your chance to be honest, well, and, I, I did. and then you wipe this out. But please let me, please let me call. I should charge you with tampering with evidence. Please let me. Please no, let me call. no, it is over. No more, no more. I'm done. Officer, please. No, I, I've never done anything bad in my whole life. Please. What is your date of birth? Five seven nineteen seventy. Please let me call somebody. Please, I will. I will call somebody right now. I'm thinking about a camera. Huh? I, I I've got a friend right here in, no. in Perkins. No, please. you're under arrest. Please don't do this. It's too late. No, please, please, please. I can't do this. Please. <laughs> After the officer decides Coates has washed alcohol out of the blue cup, his patience finally runs out. 
no, let me call. No, you said I could call somebody. I'll, I'll call somebody to come get me. Please. It's too late. Why is it too late all of a sudden? Because you've lied. Done nothing but lie. Well, th that's because I have a problem, obviously. But please. 204 to it. No. Officer, please. I have a friend that just lives right down the street. She, she'll come get me. Please. Please let me just call her. No. You said I could call somebody. Can you guys not hear me? No, you're... I need someone to come down here and transport for me. You or Dylan. <laughs> All right, here's the deal. No. Stand up. You are under arrest. I'm going to place handcuffs on the front of you. In front of you. Stand up. Can you just... No, I said I'm done. No, just... No. Can I just walk out without the handcuffs? No. No, please just let me walk out. With no, it's policy. I'm not going to... I'm not... I, I, I'm going to cuff you up front if you're going to keep... Run in your mouth, you're going to get cuffed behind you. Wait, well, can I just talk to you for a second? Please. Uh, please don't. Put your me. hands behind your back. No, uh, I don't want to. You want to go to jail with no. multiple charges? No. Put your hands behind your back. Please don't do this. Please, I just want to talk to you. Can you just talk to me? Put please? your hands behind your back. Uh, we've tr I've tried talking to you. Well, you, you're, you're not talking to me now. It, talking's over. Well, what about my stuff? It'll go with you to the jail. I, officer, please. Quit. I'm done. I tried to be nice. No. I'm done. Okay. Yeah, I, don't want I don't want Hey, it's over. You had your chance. You've done nothing but lie. And then you wipe the cup out to try to hide your evidence. We're not going to go in front of the kids, are we? At this point, it doesn't really matter. Well, it does matter. It does matter. Why does it matter? You didn't care when you came to school drunk or drank at school. I didn't drink at school. I told you I drank. Well, you had a cup, a cup of wine that was in it up. on your desk in your classroom. Oh, this one yesterday. The school immediately fired Coates from her position, and she was charged with public intoxication. But while pleading guilty in court, the judge noticed her unsteady on her feet. After finding Coates again intoxicated, her guilty verdict was withdrawn and she was taken into custody by sheriff's deputies. Showing up drunk on the first day of school is bad. But how does it compare to getting caught selling drugs at work? Like the case of a mall employee who's also been dabbling with the drunk trade. What up? Hey, Patrick. Yeah. Put your hands behind your back. We got complaints of you selling mushrooms, weed. Like, how big of a clientele do you have this? Not much. They're all seem to be adults to me. That's why I'm very confused. In Jensen Beach, Florida, authorities receive a tip allegedly that a man named Patrick is selling drugs out of a Zoomies clothing store. Police investigate, leading to two undercover agents buying salicybin mushrooms from him on two separate occasions. Now with enough evidence to make an arrest, officers are about to give Patrick the surprise of a lifetime. Patrick, how are you, buddy? What up? Hey, Patrick. Yeah. Hey, put your hands behind your back. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Looks like everything in the set. Where's the black backpack? What's up? He's got a black backpack. Oh, this is? This one says? Where's your black backpack at? My black backpack? Yeah. You got it. Got it. You got it. After searching the backpack, officers find a plastic bag containing 30 milligrams of salicybin mushrooms. Salicybin is found in a variety of mushrooms and can have a profound effect on the human brain. While recently becoming legal in several states, Florida isn't one of them, and the amount in Patrick's backpack lands him squarely in felony territory. Nothing else on it. Nothing issues. Do you want me to call somebody in? What's up? Uh, I probably would, yeah. He'll be able to make phone calls too when he gets to the office, all right? All right. All right. Please walk out. Thank you. Yeah. After being arrested and led out of the mall, Patrick is taken in to be questioned by waiting detectives. What's your name, dude? Patrick. You have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can and will be used against you in a court of law. Obviously, we're here because you got yourself in a little bit of a pickle. Mm -hmm. All right. Do you have any idea that I don't know if anyone explained anything to you yet or anything? Nope. So, months ago, we got complaints of you selling mushrooms, weed, just stuff to not only people coming in out of the store, but also the juvenile. Okay. Does any of this ring a bell at all? No. You don't sell anything? Mm-mm. Nothing at all? No. All right. Is that what you're going to stick with? Mm-hmm. All right. So you had a black bag with you today? Yes. Is that your back bag? Mm-hmm. Do you know what was inside of it? Yeah. What was inside of it? He, there were mushrooms inside the bag. Do you use mushrooms? Yes. How much mushrooms do you use at a time? 
Uh, I microdose them usually, but about a gram. Now, what if I told you that we've been buying from you for a bit? Still, does any of this ring a bell? Like, you've been selling, we've seen you, we've dealt with you. Okay. Do you want me to elaborate, like, refresh your mind a little? If you want. It's a little blurry. That's you in the store. Mm-hmm. That's you during a deal that we did. Mm-hmm. Okay. Do you have that outfit? I do. I just found it. Yeah. So, once again, that's you. We know it for a fact you deal. Okay. So, do you do it to, like, help yourself with extra money, with financially, or help people out, or what's the deal? Um, yeah. I just, I don't do anything bad. Nothing that bad. And I'm not saying that you're a bad person, dude. Mm-hmm. We get it, like, hey, you give a little here, take a little there, it's for extra money, right? Mm-hmm. What I'm trying to understand is, number one, what the actual reason is for you to sell it. I'm not saying you're a bad dude. Like, mm-hmm. you know, you don't look like a Pablo Escobar. Like, are you? I mean, I might be confused. Does anyone at the store know that you do for extra money, or? or no. No one else is involved with it? Mm-hmm. How much do you sell at a time, dude? Not much. Well, what's not much? I mean, you had what? How much did you have with them? Anyone? How much did you have with them? 30 grams. 30 grams. 30 grams. I mean, that's typically how much would you sell that for? Not much. Not much. $160. Really? Mm-hmm. That's a lot for $160. Like, $160 is pretty cheap compared to what I thought an ounce of mushrooms would be. Partially for the money, but at the same time, mushrooms for a lot of people are medicine and they help a lot of people with a lot of issues, so I don't really need too much money, so. How much would you get that for that you could sell it for one sixty? How much would I get that for? Not much. Not much. Mm-hmm. 50, really? Yeah. Oh, so you're making like a hundred bucks profit. Pretty good. Yeah. Like, I'm assuming if you buy it in bulk, right? Yeah. You're gonna get a good deal. I don't really do, I don't really do deal with much. No? No, it's fairly recent that it's been selling much, and clearly this is why. Yeah. How long have you been working at uh, Zoomies? Mm, a year in November. Have you been doing it the whole time there? No. No? How long have you been selling out of the store? Mm, a month or two. Okay. So you, you see what the issue here is, right? Like, how big of a clientele do you have? Is not much. Not much. I don't make that much money. Okay. Well, the issue obviously still stands that we're here, obviously. So, yeah. While Patrick initially denies the allegations, he quickly confesses after being confronted with the evidence. He's been dealing in mushrooms for nearly a year, yet claims he's only been selling them out of Zoomies for a couple of months. You've been selling the mushrooms for maybe like a year. So you just started selling in the last two months at Zoomies. But you've been selling it for a year overall? About. Where do you typically get it from? Uh, guy. Okay. Like locally, at the mall? Yeah, an old friend. Well, you don't seem like a bad dude, man. It's just one of those things I've where heard, you got yeah. caught up. Yeah. How much uh, mushrooms do you think this dude has that you usually get it from? He has? I'm not sure. He usually has like chocolate bars, but it's mainly weed that I get from him. But I've stocked up a long time ago on mushrooms, so that's why I kind of... I used to, used to take more myself, but after like a really bad trip, I didn't. I stopped taking them as much. It was mainly for me at first, mm-hmm. just to kind of stock up because they're hard to get. Yeah. The dude that you get in Port San Luis, eh? mm-hmm. you said he has bars. Chocolate bars. The the stuff you had today wasn't chocolate bars. Oh, no, that's what I said. He used it as chocolate bars. I had gotten it a while ago. So that was from a while ago from that same guy? Yeah, those are pretty old in there. Okay. While Patrick admits to everything up to this point, he denies any knowledge of knowingly selling mushrooms to children. That's you know. So obviously, not only do people, tourists, whatever, just come in and randomly ask you, mm-hmm. and you just kind of give it to them. What about like, like kids, like juveniles? Oh no. You don't deal with juveniles because try my best. I mean, I don't ID people, but like, is the issue that, like I said, the whole reason this started is because kids are getting man. I've never sold mushrooms to any kids. Well, juveniles, I mean, in the teenage years, I don't know if you'll be able to tell the difference. I mean, like I said, I don't ID, but... Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Have you ever had anyone tell you that they've had a really bad trip or anything off the stuff you gave them? No. Never? Mm-hmm. But you had yourself first? Well, I took way too many. How much is way too many? Um, it was about 14 grams. You took a whole 14 grams, just ate them? Well, it's called, I mean, it's called, I don't want to go into the whole specific. No, I'm, I'm curious. This is just it's called about. lemon teching. Uh, basically, if you grind up the mushrooms and put them in lemon juice, which mm-hmm. is citric acid, citric acid effect reacts to the psilocybin in the mushrooms, which um, it makes it, it basically doubles the dose, but it shortens the uh, trip. Oh. So where the trip might, you take 
seven grams, the trip might last eight hours. If you lemon tech seven grams, you're gonna trip way harder, but it'll only be for like two, three hours. Yeah. yeah. So what do you do? Do you like shut everything off and kind of just meditate? Well, that time I um, I did it, com- I was in a really bad place at the time. Um, so I, I did that. I did it in the dark in my bed. And um, you know, I like time travel. It was pretty, it was scary. I like partied with demon clown guys and stuff. It was, uh, yeah. But that's again why I always tell people that you need to weigh it out and you need to know how much you take because they can do that to you. But like I said before, it does help. I mean, it's obviously mushrooms are starting to be legalized throughout the country. Mm-hmm. It is. It does help in a therapeutic in sense. No, I've heard, I've heard that. I've definitely heard that. Where do you have your ounces? I'd rather not answer that. <laughs> so you don't want to say where the rest of it is? I'd rather not. Okay. Yeah, we're right sitting now. I just want to make sure that it's not laying around where someone can get to it or try it or get it or anything like that. Nope. You plans to ever do this again? To the cell and stuff like that? Yeah. After, if I get out of this, no, this is my... But like you said, unfortunately, the, uh, what really was the, I don't want to say bread and butter, because that sounds like a terrible way to put it, but the, the most unfortunate part about this is that we were getting complaints that kids were getting all of this, and that kids were buying it. That's just and, very, and, and when we say, we say kids, but we meet people under 18 years old, and you know, just as well as I do, like, it's hard to see, like, or tell how old somebody is. Yeah. Sometimes, I'm very like, curious about that. that. That's why I'm very curious about it, because most people, I mean, they are all seem to be adults to me. That's why I'm very confused. Yeah. Especially the mushrooms is, I have a very, even when friends of mine ask, because I do have people, you know, people are 18 I, and close, I tell them, I do not give mushrooms to children. Yeah. How, how tall are you? I'm 62. 62. How, how, how long have you been growing a beard? Uh, it's been a while now, six plus years. Yeah, six plus years. How old are you? I'm 20. I'm 20. 20. Okay. So, I mean, like, when you were in, when you were in high school, did you have pitch player? Mm-hmm. I have a pitch player. So and, and, and no, I definitely understand. I definitely understand that. You probably, you probably could have walked into a gas station and, like, bought beer, you know what I mean? The funny part is that when I was under age, I never got ID, and as soon as I came of age, I got you, ID. Usually how it happens. Yeah, yeah. it was very well, alarming. You know what I mean? Like, it's, it's hard. No, I definitely understand that. I will say, I have been very advocate for with anybody who ever asked me that I do not to give I, mushrooms. I, I believe that. I don't, I don't believe you. To anyone. Because, because as somebody who, like I said, mm-hmm. tripped too bad, I understand yeah. that it could severely mess up your mental state. Yeah. Um, yeah. Like I said, we're, we're not we're not yeah. saying you specifically went out. So no, I understand. Yeah. Listen, just I understand. I did this. I fully understand the ramifications yeah. of my choices. Yeah. I do. But, however, if I could say one thing, I always made sure that mushrooms never went to kids. Of course. Of yeah. course. No, I, I understand. Does, uh, like, your trips, when you go on a trip, is it, like, always the same, or is it something to change time? I would say so. I've only, that one time was the only time I ever saw anything that wasn't there. All the other times, it's usually just, you know, things are just kind of moving, and colors are moving. Really weird. Like, on that 70s show, kind of? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like, you know, you look at your phone, and everything's dancing around. It's usually pretty fun. Mm-hmm. Until you abuse it to the point where you take way too much, and then it's yeah. your Like I said, I saw, like, crazy demon clowns and stuff that I do time travel with. Right, like. Patrick was charged with two felony counts, each of possession of a controlled substance, selling, manufacturing, or distributing drugs, and unlawful use of a communication device. His bond was set at $120,000. Getting busted selling shrooms at work is pretty bad, but getting caught stealing may be even worse. Oh, did, he st- did he set it? Did he put it on his- Yeah. Like, times are tough. Like, I, I get it. I'm gonna be straight. Good. No, no, no. Let, 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 hear me, hear me, hear me out. I'm gonna, I, I'm gonna be straight. At an Amazon warehouse in Albuquerque, New Mexico, managers suspect an employee named Alex of stealing after several high-end electronics go missing. Uh, we were investigating it. He was asking responsible for it. So what he did was he reached inside a, um, a pod and then we had to two additional thefts with him taking uh, the beeps. Okay. Two pairs of beats, actually. I see. Um, he'll actually rip the package open so that item never actually makes it to a de- its destination. Um, and that's how we get it. We get a pretty much call it like a variance report uh, that this item was missing. It was picked by him, but it had no other test points after him. And that's when we initiated the investigation yesterday. 
uh, to figure out what happened in the Disney product. Is he unaware he's being filmed? They're all aware they're being Every station has a camera, and it, they're visible too. They're dropped down right in front of their station. Based on inside tracking data, Alex was the last employee to handle the merchandise, leading security to open an investigation. But when they review security footage, they'd see Alex as not so clever ruse at work. This is the Apple Watch. Yeah, this is the Apple Watch. I think he definitely opened that package, but he didn't. I didn't like know of him taking anything out of it. It takes him a second it as it gets towards the end of the video. Uh, is when he just steals it before he's back in there. He takes a while working that package. Yeah. Um, and he's so got he's back at it now, it looks like. Yeah. He's working it some more. I know it's kind of irrelevant to you guys, but like, is he is he lagging in his duties? Like, is he taking longer than he should be to like perform these duties because he's messing with this? Yeah. Uh, so they're in a rated function. There you go. Back at it again. Um, they're rated, and it'll show like their operations manager uh, dwell time in between from picking an item to going into the tow. Um, so every time they pick an item, they'll drop into the tote, hit the button, and that pretty much restarts the clock for them. Um, so I'm not sure what is they get what they call. Did he set, did he set it? Did he put it on? Yeah. It was something. He he pulled something he pulled out. The package he tossed it underneath the bin. Okay. Because he bent down right there, and it looked like he mm -hmm. he put something down low. Despite Alex's slee attempts to conceal his theft, the camera's high-powered lens catches every move. The irrefutable evidence would lead Alex with only one choice. During the course of the uh, interview, he's admitted to uh, taking three boxes of uh, Apple AirPod Pro in addition to what we have. Uh, he's providing a voluntary statement. Uh, he does have one of the uh, uh, items on him now at his workstation, so I can actually get a manager to bring his backpack down and everything. Um, so we'll recover those items today, or at least the one item that he does have on him. Uh, and then he also- Hi there, to, how are you? Hey, Jeff e. Bush. Nice to meet you. He steals the merchandise to sell it to a friend to make an extra uh, profit. Alex has not only confessed to the theft, but admits the motive behind it, a scheme with a friend to sell the stolen merchandise and out totaling $1,100. In New Mexico, theft of property value from $500 to $2,500 is considered a fourth degree felony and can result in up to 18 months incarceration and a $5,000 fine. He's tampered with that package. To, I mean, to my to my sight, at least three different times. Mm -hmm. Jeff, did you see more than that? No. I see him up. So he might have gotten it out right there, and now he puts it in the pocket. No, he 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 put something underneath first seat. Oh, oh, he did. He put it over there. Yeah, yeah, the jacket. Right there. Right there. That's the concealment. Yep. They're showing me today. Twelve thirty-two thirty. Oh, yeah, that's plenty. Okay. Yeah, that's plenty. With Alex's illegal activity caught on camera multiple times, the deputy has more than enough evidence to charge him with a crime. And unfortunately for him, Amazon is eager to prosecute. Is he in the room with the clock? Yeah. Okay. Yep. And out of curiosity, like, you guys want to prosecute? Yeah, we desire prosecution. Okay. With all evidence laid out, there's only one thing left to do. Question Alex, who's nervously waiting in a nearby conference room. As Alex has shown, theft isn't always about big heists or daring escapes. It happens every day in small, unexpected ways. In fact, nearly two in three people have lost or had their wallets stolen. That's why it's crucial to protect yourself with brands like our video sponsor, Exter. The brand behind the world's most efficient smart wallets. Exter wallets are not just sleek and stylish, but they're also super slim, half the size of conventional wallets, yet they can carry over 12 cards in cash. With Extra's quick card access, you can effortlessly access all your cards at the click of a button with its signature trigger mechanism. What sets Extra apart from regular wallets is its built-in RFID blocking technology, which helps prevent data theft and wireless skimming. And here's the best part. Extra wallets come with a solar-powered tracking device, allowing you to track your wallet's location from your phone. It's like having a personal assistant dedicated to keeping your valuables safe. So while Alex thought he was being clever, you can outsmart the unexpected with Extra. And here's an exclusive offer for our viewers. Use the promo code KILLERS during checkout to unlock additional savings and protect what matters most. You need to use the restroom? Please. Okay. We're gonna we're gonna go with you, okay? You know where it's at? Uh, yeah, yeah, I'll show you. Okay. Well, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're detained right now. 
After using the restroom, an increasingly anxious Alex is left alone in the conference room to be questioned by the deputy. While he's already confessed to his employer, it's not too late to ask for a lawyer. Despite possibility looking like a sign of guilt, it's something he has every right to if he's going to be questioned by police. Yeah, I'll, I'm, I'm deputy, bro. Um, I told Alex, I told you you're detained. Um, I'm going to read you your rights. Um, when I get through them, if you have any questions whatsoever, please feel free to ask me, okay? Um, right now, you have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can and will be used against you in a court of law. You have the right to talk to an attorney for advice before we ask you any questions and have an attorney with you during questioning. If you can't afford an attorney, one will be appointed to you by the state of New Mexico free of charge before any questioning if you wish. If you decide to answer questions now without an attorney present, you'll have the right to stop answering at any time. You also have the right to stop answering at any time to talk to your attorney. Alex, dude, I've never met you before. You seem like a good dude. You can tell me to kick rocks, pound sand, and go fly a kite. You feel me? You don't have to talk to me, Alex, if you don't want to. Does that make sense? Do you understand that? You don't have to talk to me. You don't have to talk to me. Um, do you want to talk to me? Um, I, like I said, I've never met you. They asked us to come here. I don't know anything about, about all this. And I just, if you want to give me a statement, if you want to talk, great. If you don't, tell me to pounce Dan. Okay. Um, what's got you tripped up? Okay. I don't, Alex, I don't know exactly what's going on. So, could you, could you tell me what happened or why they pulled you back here? Okay. Is... Like, times are tough. Like, I, I get it. Is something going on, like, at home? Like, you are you hard out? always is. Yeah. But that's my excuse. Ooh. How long you worked here, Alex? Five months. Five months? Is it a pretty good place to work? Okay. What is, just out of curiosity, what did they, are they, are they letting you go or you don't know? I mean, I'd be surprised. Okay. And what what do they have you doing here? Picking. Okay. Um. You don't got it. You don't want to. You know what I'm saying? I appreciate you. You don't want to talk. I mean, there's four more minutes. I already told them. Okay. And I don't know that. Like, I don't know these people. So that's what I'm saying. So right now, am I, am I going to jail? I don't know that. I absolutely don't know that. Because like I said, I don't know what's going on. Okay. I think that there's a product and it's been an investigation. You can be confessed to what I told you. Okay. I told them the things that I told you. What was it? Some kind of blood is from on the scene. Okay. Like the wireless ones? Mm-hmm. How many, uh, how many items? Okay. Were they all the same item or different? Okay. Is, like, were you going to, like, resell them or? Knowing he's caught dead to rights, Alex admits to stealing several pairs of earbuds in order to resell. However, the deputy has to be sure on the timeline of events before he officially brings him in. I could, I could understand why you feel that way. It's the the one thing I'll be honest with you. I do really need to know is what like, when did it was it yesterday or no. it was today? No. Oh, months ago. Yeah. Okay. What is it? Um, so, so the earbuds were taken months ago. Okay. 29, I think. Don't you? Yeah. Based on timeline. Um. Yeah. Okay. 
Um, I need to confirm, Alex. I'm gonna be straight. Good. No, no, no. Yeah, let, 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 hear me, hear me, hear me out. I'm gonna, I, I'm gonna be straight. If what you're telling me is true, then I'm probably not taking you into custody today. If what you're telling me is true, I just have to confirm with with them like when it happened, um, just because that's how I do my job. It depends on the value of the items. Uh, and I'm being completely honest with you. I'm not. I'm not playing any games with you. I got you, I hear you. It completely depends on what it was and how much it cost. Um, I'll tell you. I'll tell you this much. Um, I don't know you. I've never met you. I don't know if you have a record or not of anything. I. I do think it is a better situation for for you. Be honest and say. Okay. But it's like uh, like a warrant. It's probably not extraditable, I would guess anyway. Um, okay. I mean, I'm gonna be completely honest. Best case scenario, what'll happen is I'll gather information from them. Um, we'll probably see you out of here. Um, you, you'll be released, and you'll get some you'll get some paperwork in the mail to appear for it later on. Um, that's best case scenario. If what you're telling me is true, I want to take you at your word because I think you're I think you're telling me the truth. Um, then that that's what would happen. If if they tell me like no, he took something today, like recently, that would change things. I would have to take you into custody. So no, I I will, I will not. Alex, I will not lie to you. I'll be completely truthful with you. Um, Man, this job's nuts, bro. I'll be honest with you. <laughs> anyway, so. it, it is. It's it's, it's kind of crazy, but what I do appreciate, Alex, is just like like people that are just they don't make our job hard. They're just they're straight, and I appreciate that. We had to we had to scrap with some big huge dude <laughs> that like wouldn't he wouldn't leave like a property We're like you can't camp here man like the county owns this land and like i don't want to do that i don't come to work wanting to hurt people but yeah it's just the way it goes sometimes so just just double check like the date and i'll stay i'll stay with alex and i dude you me fence post i the last thing i want to do is, is Take a trip out there. I can't stand that place. Alex, I can't stand that place. Yeah. And even if so, I just I would like to know the next step. You, and and I've told I've told you everything I could tell you. But I, you're a good dude, man. Alex, I uh, I appreciate you. I don't I don't meet a lot of people that are are just straight up like I don't. While obviously in serious trouble, Alex's continued honesty with the officer will be his saving grace. While Alex is still being charged for the theft because enough time has elapsed, he will not be taken into custody today. A warrant will be issued at a later date, which the officer will then personally inform him of. At that point, he must turn himself in or face a warrant for his arrest. He admitted the, um, about the air buds. Didn't say anything about the watch, did he? Um, but that's not surprising. Yeah, <laughs> he's. Yeah, I mean, he's he's in deep. Like, he, yeah, he, he's made an admission to you guys and, yeah. and to us. So oh, actually. I seriously doubt. I seriously doubt that he's like will have something different to say after being recorded. You right, know, right. Um, yeah. So because of the time that's elapsed of the right. of the of the criminal charges, yeah. that's why we didn't take him into custody yeah. today. Um, but I just let him know. I was real nice and polite to him, and I, I just let him know, listen, like, you know, we're going to release you now, but but I'm going to issue a warrant, and he, and I'm going to call you, and you, you need to turn yourself in when that happens. And he's like, I will. And I told him, like, you've already done a lot, like, for yourself, good. And, like, you've admitted, you've been cooperative, Absolutely. all that stuff. So the worst thing you could do now is, like, don't follow through on that end or try and hide, like, then it's going to get bad. So yeah. I was like, you're already down this road, just stay on this road. So. Alex was suspended by Amazon until the investigation was complete. A warrant was later issued for his arrest, and he was charged with one count embezzlement. While Amazon warehouse employees stealing is bad enough, it's not half as bad as one driving drunk. Okay, yeah, he just ran up on the curb. I screwed up. Well, what was going on? You just uh, have a couple for when you're working, or? 
I bet there's gonna be booze if you have here it is. On October 24th, 2021, police in Solon, Ohio received complaints of an Amazon delivery van driving recklessly in the area. Affirmative. Okay, yeah, he just ran up on the curb. I'm gonna stop him. When an officer catches up with the van and witnesses the reckless driving firsthand, it's all the evidence he needs to initiate a stop. How you doing today? Oh, I'm okay. Yeah? You're just okay or? What's going on today? <laughs> You're what? <laughs> I got you. You got a driver's license on you? What time did you start working today? Uh, 10. 10 this morning? Yeah. Do you know what time it is now? Do you have anything to drink today or? No. Do you have any medical conditions or anything? Uh, depression. Do you know, uh, can you say the alphabet starding with E and ending with W? Do you do me a favor, why don't you hop on out here real quick, all right? Do you touch your stuff down there. With the man struggling to get through the alphabet, the officer decides it best to remove him from the vehicle to not be a danger to himself or others. Okay, you can come back this way. You're just gonna go back this way a little bit on this. You don't have anything in your pockets or you know, nothing, uh, no no razor blades, no nothing like that. Look, just okay. All right, what? What were, uh, you see yourself driving up on the curb? You notice that at all? Right. Yeah, I, I screwed up. What, what was going on? I just wasn't paying attention. I mean, it was all down the road, though. You kind of, you hit the curb a couple times, didn't you? Yeah, I was, I was done with my route, and I just screwed up. Yeah. All right, do me a favor, take your hat off for me real quickly. And then, um, can you see the tip of my finger here? Mm -hmm. Just follow the tip of my finger with your eyes, okay? Don't move your head, just your eyes, all right? Don't move your head, keep your head. Keep going, keep going. You got to, yeah. Okay, do me a favor. We're gonna place your hands right behind your back, all right? I'm gonna place you under arrest for driving under the influence, okay? All right, is there alcohol in the car or? No. What happened today? You just, uh, have a couple for when you're working or? While officers go through the routine of a field sobriety test, it's obvious to anyone what the outcome would be. They have more than enough evidence to arrest Sersig for DUI. And after placing him in the back of the vehicle and searching the van, they'll have even more. Like I know, I think, I bet there's going to be booze if, yep, here it is. Oh, wow. Was that an Amazon van like Bill Bombay? Because police have reason to believe Sersig committed a crime, they can legally search the vehicle without a warrant. Their suspicions will prove true. The van has a strong odor of alcohol, and after searching Sersig's bag, officers find an open bottle of whiskey. All right, I'm gonna get him out of here. An officer waits with the Amazon van while the other takes Sersig in along with the evidence. Sersig pleaded not guilty to misdemeanor charges of OVI, prohibited Bay C, and driving in marked lanes. His blood alcohol content was measured at 0.284.
In Ohio, the legal limit is 0.08. Being arrested for drunk driving in the middle of a shift is disgraceful, but how does it compare to stealing from your work to buy handbags and a new car? I wanted to talk to you for a second. Yeah, of course. You're breaking my freaking heart. There should be one one hundred dollar bills in there. Over between the two, and now there's only one one hundred. On June 16, 2021, a store owner in Castleberry, Florida, contacts police after suspecting an employee of theft. I never thought this would happen. And you've got, and you got your initials you said on those dollar bills. After money goes missing and an employee suspiciously buys goodsy handbags and a new car. The store owner starts a sting operation before officers arrive, marking the bills with distinct lettering to confirm they were stolen from her business. Plus, we have the serial numbers of the others. Okay. Oh, All right. How do we do this? Do I just go in and no. just, uh, how does she look? She's got a long tan khaki skirt. She's got a black over jacket. She's the shorter of the two. She looks kind of Latin. And I have to register tape too that she pulled it with the timestamp too. Okay, you got that on video? Or do you just tape it? I just have me on video, but not her on the video doing it. But I have the time, but she might have the time. Yeah, of course. What's your phone number? Excuse me, man. Did she call me phone with the customer? No. Okay. Hello. Hey, Hi. how you doing? Good, how are Say, you? Catch me Police Department. Yeah. The reason why I'm here today is because we got a call in reference to something. I was wondering if we could talk to you for a second. Yeah, of course. Is there somewhere we can talk to her? A few months old privately, you can just go in the back. <clears throat> yeah, you can go ahead okay. and show us. So, first question is, can you guess why we're here? Um, I was accused of stealing money at a party. That was it. I, all I was doing was trying to break in bond. I thought I started my period, and I had moved this girl's bag. I only paid her back because I didn't want anything to happen. I didn't want it to be put on me because I'm not that kind of person. I'm sorry. And the way she was talking to me, like it felt like it was gonna be. Who was the she? Was it your manager or? No, it was um, a girl at the party that I guess she had messaged me, and she said like, "I saw you, the one doing that." Okay. Um, so, what's this? What's this young lady like name? I, I didn't get to know her. Um, I have it on my phone. I can show it to you. Okay. Um, I think it's started with an A. Uh -huh. But she said, like, either way, I'm going to, like, put legal. Okay. And what, where was this party? It was at, um, like, a new Rays event center in Lake Mary. She appears to have no idea the officers are talking to her because her manager caught her stealing from work today. Instead, she talks about being accused of stealing from a girl at a party recently. Though the officers aren't speaking to her in relation to that event, it's safe to assume having prior accusations of stealing won't help her case when they inform her about the theft charges the police are actually speaking to her about. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, we appreciate it, but mm -hmm. that's not necessarily why we're here today. We're here because you're being accused of theft. However, the theft is not in regards to that part. It's in regards to something that's happening here today. Okay. So, you have a manager um, who advised us that, well, not manager, you have one of your other co-workers mm -hmm. who advised us that they left a certain amount of dollars, very identifying marks mm -hmm. on that. And you were the only person in the store. Okay. So. She also has the receipts of the opening of when the drawer was open, what exact time. Okay. So where we're at right now is uh, I can't, I can't promise you anything. But for me, and I'm sure Officer Ferrer, same thing, honesty is the best policy. Okay. So, could you tell us anything about that? I could do it. Um, I'm having some issues with money right now. Okay. Um, I just like bought off a new car, so it's, I haven't been working lately. Um, I will admit to that, so... Was it just today, or has it been in the past? It was today, and then I've done it in the past before, but never like large amounts. How much would you say? Probably like. That's why we walked you up to the back. Three hundred, maybe, was the most beforehand. It's in my bag. Okay, can I go look through that bag? Yes, sir. Okay. It's gonna be in that box. The suspect just mentioned that she had paid off her car, which has led her to some financial issues. The officers are also about to search a four thousand dollar bag. She admits to stealing at least three hundred dollars and some other small amounts. But at this point, we can assume the officers know that the price of the bag and what it would cost to pay off a car is a bit more than what she claims. 
All right, do you mind, do you mind uh, coming over here for me? Sure. Just to <laughs> identify. That's not my person. Can I take a picture of you here? I already have all the pictures. This is going on in the report. Can you identify these bills? Hold on one second. Do you see any days before? Let's go. I have serial numbers. Okay. Of the others. I gotta get the serial numbers. Well, the J's I know are ones. And there's one J. There's my J's. There's another J here. This is the only J, but I'll get you the serial number. No problem. That's a J. This one is. Okay. Caitlin, I need the serial numbers. And I have to tell you, at this moment, you're being placed in investigative detention. I'm not gonna put you in cuffs or nothing like that right now. We'll, we'll get to that later, okay? Live supporting documentation. Make sure you, uh, can she have a seat for a minute? Of course. You have you have your customer and stuff with whatever has to get the court. Okay. Does does this belong to you? The five dollars yeah. that was given to me from her. Okay. I owe her money for coffee, the five singles. Oh, yes. Right, listen, I'm gonna grab some paper. Yeah. How many how many you need to do with press charges? Yes, I do. And because I added it up, it's a couple thousand dollars that's been going on. You're breaking my freaking heart. I have the documentation in my car. I wasn't prepared to turn it over because I was trying to rule it out. But I'll show you what I was preparing for my insurance company. Okay, let's see that. It's, it's well over what she has here. I was hoping she would show it all, what you took this morning, and you didn't. So, no, hey, I'm well, that's, that's sorry. Not it, let's make it not contentious. As the suspect plays dumb, the business owner makes a startling revelation. The hundreds in her purse were just the tip of the iceberg, as she's actually missing a total of $7,000. That she knows of now. All right, y'all, do me a favor, stand up. Five, right now, you're gonna be placed under arrest for theft. Okay, do me a favor, lift your hands up. Do anything. I'm not gonna search for anything. I'll let them do that. At the jail, okay. So it was only the one time before this. She took maybe like 300. Yeah. Okay. Because I was making good money before, and I was breaking up. So what? She cut your hours, don't you? Is there a reason what she did? To me, I feel like it's because I wasn't doing anything right. So I kind of sucked, but I don't know. Okay. So I'm going to jail. <clears throat> She was wondering if she will be getting jail time for this. In Florida, theft above $20,000 is a second degree felony with a potential for 15 years in jail. Less than $20,000 is a third degree felony with a potential five years of jail. So now the officers have to try to find out how much was stolen so they can decide what degree of theft she is looking at. It's just this year, by it's the way. Just this it's year. just this year. How many? I didn't keep track. I mean, you got to have a ballpark in excess of $1,000. How much was your purse? How much was your car? Right. Right. How much do you think? Oh, I want to hear what you think. That was more than $100. At a time? Or? She's missed $22,000. Yes, sir. So if you don't think you took that much, you got to have a ballpark of how much you do think. She doesn't think she took $22,000, but also can't give a ballpark on how much she has stolen. So the officers have no choice but to detain her until they further the investigation. All right, come on. Uh -huh. What side am I going? Um, try to keep it away from, you know, general public, so. Um, like I said, I talked to her. With estimates of the theft now reaching north of $20,000, the suspect is taken into custody to officially face charges. The suspect was given one year of probation and ordered to pay $20,000 in restitution. While that suspect admitted her crimes fairly quickly, the same can't be said for the one in our final case. She told me someone was trying to grab her and take her into the bathroom. I can't go to jail, dude. I'm on probation. Her story adds up more than this. You've taken me to jail? Yeah. Please! Please! Get off the phone. On August 25th, 2023, officers in Sandusky, Michigan are called to a local thrift store where an employee named Andrew Jewell has allegedly attempted to pull a young girl into a bathroom. And when they arrive on scene, the distraught mother understandably demands justice. My daughter was apparently attempted to be pulled into the bathroom by a young man here. Okay. Well, well, not the manager, he's a, he's a I said a young man. Oh, I'm sorry, okay. My, I was right around the corner at the racks where the clothes were. My son came over and told me someone was trying to grab her and take her into the bathroom. Okay. I obviously went over there and he was inside with her trying to get out of the bathroom crying 
That's another reason why I don't believe that he tried to push her out because I saw her in the bathroom trying to get Anyway, he told me I didn't see I would like you to not be around her, please. Just take off. We'll get back with you guys when we have more information, okay? What happened? Yeah. You got porn on your back. What? Somebody, a kid that works there tried to pull her into the bathroom. Is he in there? No, hey. Is he in there? Stay here. No. Is he in there? I'm going to go deal with that in a moment, okay? The girl's father arrives to furiously demand answers, prompting the officer to move things along by questioning the store manager before confronting Jewel. He'll tell the officer some disturbing details, including a prior history of similar behavior. He does, he had a charge in Lapeer that was on probation for four misdemeanor, but he was never charged. They never had enough evidence. But the same thing. Okay. What I see on the camera, and I can forward it to you, is him going in the back, mm -hmm. coming back out, mm -hmm. then looking, and waited till they came back around. And, and it's right back there in the corner, so I have no clear angle on that. On that. His name is named. You know, his information. I'll be getting it somehow. Okay, so I got both doors locked just okay. because of that situation. I didn't want to right. escalate. Would you like to go around back and talk to him, or just... Yeah, well, we can go through you. I am. Just the bathroom in question. So, the way I questioned it was, is... Alright, so... Just, oh, just head right in here, and we'll right talk in, in just second. a moment. We're right there in a second. So, this is what he explained to me. That he was in the bathroom, okay? Mm-hmm. And he said someone pushed in, he went like this, and he went like this grab and said, hey, you can't be in here. But you guys get over Head on in there. So I'll forward it to you. Yep. Let you the officer will now speak to the suspect to get his side of the story while the manager gathers all the tape. You got an ID on you? Yes, but can I talk to you? Well, I need your ID so I know who I'm talking to first. I'm gonna go to jail, ain't I? Because everybody's gonna believe everything. Is he gonna pose a tape? That's what he's doing. I'm not gonna worry about that. All right, can I talk, please? Yeah, go ahead. I was in the bathroom. Before I shut the door, I told her, because they pick a free toy, you can ask them up there. I told them that you guys can get a free toy. So they go there, look at the toys. I shut the door. When I was using the bathroom, the little girl walked in on me. And she made it halfway in the doorway. I freaked out and tried to slam the door and it hit her. That's why she was crying. I can't go to jail, dude. I'm on probation. What are you on probation for? Uh, a misdemeanor assault. I can't. Misdemeanor assault for what? I don't know. I. Where do you live at? The rescue mission. Please, I can't go to jail. I'm so screwed. Jewel, who lives at the store's adjoining homeless shelter, tells the officer he's on probation, yet is vague on the details. In fact, he attempted to pull another young girl into a movie theater bathroom just one year prior. I, I can't go to jail. What? The... Well, you this is so I, far. I, I'm just going to make sure I've got your name on. I have a question. Can we step out the back door so I can at least smoke while we talk, please? No, not right now. What did you get in, when did you get in trouble in? About a year ago, over a year ago, maybe two years ago almost. Okay, and what did you, what did you get in trouble for? I saw. What happened? I got into a fight. With who? A friend of mine. We were at the movie theater, and we got into an argument after the movie, started a whole entire fight, the police showed up. You ever been in trouble for anything else? Nope. Okay. So you're on probation out of Saginaw? Yes. It, the probation officer knows I'm down here. I'm going to set my bag down to the side while you're That's watching. That's fine. <sighs> Alright, just stay in here. I'll be back with you in a minute. Having heard both the suspect's side of the story and the parents, the officer needs to confirm whose recount of the events is correct before an arrest is made. Andrew is instructed to stay in the back room while the officer bows over the footage with the manager. Doesn't show. See, there's the little girl right there. Andrew already went to the bathroom. 
see Bruce, Bruce is coming to the bathroom. <laughs> The little boy found, but the little girl never goes on that side. Then, let me speed it up a little bit. It shows her the whole time, but it shows him coming. The little boy comes back over. He goes around the scene that shows Andrew going into the back room. Okay. But he comes back out. Forty two oh four. So it also shows him so now this is farther down and it'll show him coming back out into the bathroom. So that doesn't add up with the video camera. Mm -hmm. But he's saying, see, that's where he comes out again in there. But he doesn't go to the bathroom, see? He comes around here and started looking for us to see what we were at. I'm in the office. Heather's right there. Chris is right there. And see, he's looking for the little girl right now. He just saw the little girl walk back over there. And there's a little boy, see? Now he's walking that way. So her story adds up more than his. The manager shows the officer security footage, which backs up both the girl's and her brother's version of events and refutes Jewel's entirely. Can I talk to you first? I already talked to you. Okay, uh, hold up. Your I... story doesn't add up. I'm telling you, I swear to God, I was in the bathroom. She, the reason why she was crying, she hit her head. I swear to God, I wouldn't lie, please. Well, I swear to God. I, I got a problem with your statement because I got the little girl saying you grabbed her by the shoulder. I got the brother who said you grabbed her by the shoulder, and the mom says she was trying to get out of the bathroom and had to pull away from somebody to get out. Chris, can I explain? Can I, can I walk you to the bathroom and show you what We I, were just there. No, but can I show you? Can I show you when you walk to the bathroom? Dad, stay on the phone, please. All right. So I'm sitting on the toilet. Open the door a little bit. Just open it. Mm-hmm. She walks right, she opens the door and walks right there. I hurry up and get up and try to pull my pants up and I grab her shoulder. Like I said, then the little boy came around the corner and when I tried to push her out, the door got stuck to my foot. It kept pushing, so I'm trying to pull my pants up and push her out. And that's when she hit her head right there. That's when she started crying and the little boy saw me put my hands on her shoulder because I put my hands on her shoulder to stop her from coming in fully and that's when I pushed her out. That's what I'm trying to tell you. I swear to God, please. Go ahead and get off the phone. You taking me to jail? Yeah. Please, please. Get off the phone. Please, get I off swear. The phone. I swear to God. I swear to God. I swear to God. Turn around, put your hands behind your back right now. <laughs> I swear to God. <laughs> I swear to God. I swear! Stop. I swear! I didn't do nothing! Please! Can I at least speak to Tom before I go? Can I at least speak to him? Can you stop screaming? Yes. <laughs> Did the camera show me doing anything? The cameras back up more what the little girl said than what you said. Tom! Tom! I swear I didn't! No, Tom! So here's, here's the situation. Tom! Please! Please, Tom! So here's the Here's the situation we're under. We're gonna ask you to leave the shelter. Even if you do get bailed out, I will have your stuff. I will, you want me to call Jennifer and have her come pick up your stuff? You cannot stay at our shelter. You're no longer welcome. Okay? Wait, listen, listen. That's listen, can you at least to listen say, to me? Okay? Can, can I say one name, Tom? One name, please, I'm begging you. So, if I'm going to jail, am I getting out? You are no longer welcome at our shelter. So why I have to go to jail if I don't go to the shelter? No, you're still going to jail. I, did it say another shelter? That's up to the judge and that uh, stuff, they're sagging off. Yep. Can, can I at least call you while I'm in the jail? Please. Please. Jennifer would be better off to help you at this point, Please. I mean, there's nothing I can do for you. I swear I did it, Dom! Uh, that's up to... I so swear to God! <laughs>
That's someone else besides me to decide. I swear to God, Tom. I don't decide that officer. Jessica doesn't decide that. So that's stuff that speaks beyond us. I swear to God, Tom. Oh, okay. I swear to God. Thank you for everything, Tom, but I swear to God. So you want me to, so this phone, do you want me you want to take it with you? Yes. Your backpack. You, you can have this stay big enough. Alright, I'll, I'll, I'll okay, I will call Jennifer. Okay. Here, put this in the backpack because yeah, he yep, can't yep. have those. Yep, you got a lighter in there? Yeah. <laughs> okay. I swear to God, I didn't do nothing. His backpack's still back there. I swear to God. I figured. Yep. I swear to God, I can do nothing. <laughs> he at least not hold my heart so tight that hurts. Jewel was originally charged with assault and battery, but two felony counts were later added, including kidnapping and child enticement. He was deemed competent to stand trial and is currently awaiting trial.